Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, special edition of Here's Tom with the Weather, um, where we interview uh, certain people um, who've been sober for quite a while and have an interesting story. And I'm really glad today that I have one of those. And now um, my name is David G. Um, I'm currently in Bradford in West Yorkshire in England. Um, and I am interviewing this gentleman here. Uh, would you please introduce yourself and tell us where you are? Oh, you call me Sailor Bob, and I'm in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. So that's uh, Bob A. Um, and Bob, when, what year did you get sober with AA? 1960. 1960, OK. May, no, May 1960. May 1960. So you're coming up for your 60, well, 62nd, 61st? Yeah, 61st. 61st. Wow, that's amazing. So, Bob, so first of all, mate, um, just wanted you to give us a little bit of a background of you and what, what, what you were like before you got sober in those years. Um, uh, you, so what's your birth, date of birth, if you wouldn't mind um, saying that as well, Bob? 21st, the 7th, 28th. 1928. Okay, mate. So um, <clears throat> could you just give us a bit of a background of where you were born and your life and what it was like uh, and how your alcoholism started and I guess what your spiritual outlook on life as well uh, was before before you got sober. Well, I was born in a place called Berwick and uh, lived there for the first 12 years of my life on a farm, it's all, all uh, houses now, but it was a farm then. Barrick in Victoria, was it, Bob? That, that, that was in Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Finished school at 14. Cleared off the bush for a while. Then went on stations and knocked around a bit. Got into the booze early. What, who were your mum and dad, Bob? Bob you what, 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 who were your mum and dad? What, what, what were they? Did they have jobs? What did, what did they do? Yeah, my father was a veteran from Gallipoli, 14, 18, And my mother was a housewife. Your dad was a veteran from Gallipoli, and, and was that, I guess these days you'd call it PTSD. Did he, did he what was he like when he came back? Well, he was knocked about a bit then. He wasn't a drinker or anything like that, but he you know, had a short fuse. No. Okay. He, he got a job during the Depression. He had, he had a small farm which was given him through the soldier settled way. He lost that in the Depression. So we got a job on the estate out there, did farm um, work, looking after it, managing it. And we lived there for the first 12, for 12 years in the way. Okay. And, and uh, um, what about school? You said you, you left school early then, you, you left at 14. Yeah. You weren't a scholar? No. Uh, Cleared off to the bush, went fruit picking, and uh, the war, it was a war time, the war was still on then. And there was deserters and blokes on the run. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. All, all sorts of the, the rough ends of the earth, you know, because they were rested all at the war. Kind of like the French Foreign Legion, was it? Yeah. And uh, if, you open your, if I opened my mouth as a kid, I Got a fist in it, so I had to learn to fight. <laughs> All right. Were you pretty handy, were you? Well, early in the piece, I wasn't too bad, but towards the end, I was punching bags for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. And what, so when you say deserters, so there were deserters from people who, who didn't want to fight in the war and, and yeah. ran into the bush to escape? Yeah. Wow. Bunch of running away from their wives and all sorts of crims and knockabouts, you know. Wow. Pretty rough. Do you, remember you, do you remember your first drink? How old were you when you had your first drink? I was 15. And 
imagine the thought of change thing and then I could talk back a bit and uh, yeah. fight but a pretty bad temper and I went bush from then on so I'm looking I joined the Navy at that time I was treated pretty heavily that's the Royal and, uh, Australian Navy yeah Finished up in the occupation of Japan at the end of the war. And there, got into the booths heavily. Finished up in a psych ward for violence and things like that. And got shipped back to Australia in a padded cell of a hospital ship. Because I was, they didn't be locked up in a psych ward or getting into trouble. And I went to the psych ward for, a, I forget how long it was, it was a while, but in there I was interviewed by a couple of psychiatrists, and one had something to do with AA in Australia in the early days when it first came out. And they diagnosed me as a chronic alcoholic that didn't try to be and uh, I've got a free dis discharge out of that, you know. Mm. But uh, it allows me to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, but I took no notice of that. Went out and went bush again, went into the shearing sheds and started shearing, knocking around. Speak up. Knocking <laughs> around in the shearing sheds and on the booze, because I've got kicked out of that industry. Being a drunk, uh. yeah. Well, when you say, um, so you got so you were in the navy at the end of the war, so did you see action in the navy no. or did you just no, go was, to the occupation of Japan? I, I was 17 when I went right. to the war. The war finished in June, I think, and I went in in November. I was wow. the first draft of firms after the war. Hmm. That's but that's really interesting. Uh, I don't think I've I don't think I've ever spoke to anyone who's been in like spoke to anyone who's been in japan what what can you just do you, what your memories i mean i know you were drinking and stuff but what do you remember of japan after the war was the, the occupation must have been a strange ordeal i would imagine they were in a pretty bad way they were mostly a lot of them were starving and with food and things like that they'd come and eat the scraps out of the rubbish bin yeah. Right. And I guess, yeah, were they resentful um, as a people or were they they just they're just more concerned about feeding? Well, well I, I never talked to them much, never had much to do with them. You know. Right. We're supposed to fraternise with them, the time, but we did a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. OK. <laughs> and uh, did you get did you get the sake? Was it the did you get into the sake and stuff? Did you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I was locked up in the psych ward there, and there was a an Aussie soldier there. And there was a mixed, bit mixed up in the mind too. So he says, "I know where, if we get out there, well, he says, I know where we can get a drink." Right. So we got it. We got out of there. I don't know how, but it was like, <laughs> we to get, didn't take long for the MPs to find us. Wow. What 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 was the incident that led you to um to getting into the psych ward? I mean, was it a series of events, or what was the what was the yes. what did you do? Did you fight? Did you hit? Yes, I was fighting and violence and coming and, and the psych the doctor on the ship says you know it's no good you know they better, they better let them have a, have a look at you and they did <laughs> right and, and then, what uh, go on sorry man. Well, what was the diagnosis? What did they diagnose? You just been just crazy. Yeah. At that stage, they didn't diagnose me. I was, I was a, not I wasn't too good to have it in the navy, and that proved to be so. I was they shipped me home, and uh, on the way there was a couple of there was a, in the in the in the site was a few really. Guys that had 
post-traumatic stress in a bad way, you know. And they were loading them on the ship and the push, push, pushing them around a bit. And I opened my mouth and told them I'll let him alone. So they grabbed me and put me in the padded cell. Uh -huh. And I came back to Australia in a padded cell full of nematol. <laughs> wow. Getting in the day. Wow. Um, I'd, only, I'd only just been over 18 at the time, I think I was. And I didn't know what, you know, being a push boy, country boy, I didn't know what was on. I thought, oh, God, I'll be here for the rest of my life. Frightened the hell out of me, you know. Mm. And I where, where, did you, where did you sail into? Where did the, where was the padded cell? Where did you sail in? Sydney, Sydney. Melbourne? Sydney. Sydney. Okay. And, um, what was it? The hospital. Couldn't forget the name of it. It's a well-known one. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, that's where the psychiatrist interviewed me. The diagnosis was a chronic alcoholic and side of neurosis. And I got a free discharge out of the name. Right. So they didn't give me any treatment or anything like that. They told me I should go to this fellowship AA, but I didn't know anything about it. It was new, I suppose. So What year was that, Bob? What what when did you when did you hear about AA? What year was that? 48. I'd only, come, I'd only come to Australia in 47. Yeah. Wow. But you you didn't want a bar of it. You were just more interested in, you wanted to get back out the bush, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I carried on and getting locked up all sorts of trouble. And uh, finally got in a, a bad way in 19... 59, I think it was. What out of that? 48, 59. Nine years later, I was in a bad way. And I thought I'd go along and have a look at this AA. Right. I went along, and amazingly enough, I stopped drinking. But uh, stopped drinking for a little while. They had these steps on the wall, talking about a higher power of God. I didn't have a bar of God. I wouldn't have a bar. I didn't have a bar. But then I don't need this shit. So I walked, away, walked out of it, went away and left it. They, and I said then, you know. Mm. Where, where was your first meeting, Bob? Where, where, whereabouts actually was your first meeting? Do you remember? Yeah, coming to that. Uh, <clears throat> so it was uh, 1959. I was in a really bad way. I thought about this somehow and I thought it'd go along. And I went to a meeting in the Fairs Hotel, which is in Collins Street. I was off Collins Street, a little side street there, last clock beach. Ten of the week meeting there, there were seven people there. And uh, there only two of them were talking to the rest of <laughs> Really? Yeah. Anyway, why not? Why why didn't they want to talk to you? Well, I was a nasty bastard. Ah, got you. Right. And that's when you say is that Melbourne Collins Street or is that Sydney? Where were you there? Melbourne. Melbourne, okay. I mean, that's Melbourne. And that's Collins yeah. Street, was a Collins Street meeting, was it? No, it was uh, in a little Collins Street, it was, uh, about, about opposite where the Doc H used to be. Just over, just over King Street. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, I went to a few meetings then. And uh, stayed sober for a little while. But then I left it and went out. As I said, knock off, knock off the meetings and knock off pots, and they were mm -hmm. right. They were right. They were right. <laughs> but, uh, and then my memory is going a bit. It's okay. Uh, I managed to yeah, after nine months. I got on again nine months later. I got back to 
And that was in my 15, 60, my 60, got back to yeah. And this time when I went to work with the meeting, this bloke in there handed me a book called Sobriety and Beyond, written by a Catholic priest who was an alcoholic. And then in the introduction, he said, we alcoholics are given a second chance at life. And that's like, boom, shit. I've been here, got sober, death is different than dead people now. Got sober, and I got them again, and I'm back dead, as a dead beat again. I've been given a second chance. And underneath, he had the question mark, how well do you use that second chance? And I'm like, other working against. Came to me then, well, there's only one way you can use it. Find out, find out what it is that's given you the second chance. Maybe there is such a thing as a higher power. Maybe and that little chink in the armour was the start of the hell. Yeah. Honestly, open the mind. Open yeah. the mind a little bit. Step two. The second chance. Yeah. And then the bloke lived a few doors from where I was living at the time. He's been sober five years, an old timer. <laughs> it was. And the bloke went 12 months with an old timer, then two years. Wow. Well. very long. And he started carting me around, and it grew from there. And then I started looking into the spiritual stuff. Being a Westerner, I looked into Christianity first. Looking at it, you know, I was got feeling up about it now, looking into everything. I was up on stages getting dumped in bars and going to all sorts of meat. Yeah. And that turned me to the East after a while because I looked into everything and reading books and things like that, picking up bits here and there. That time the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi came to Melbourne in 1962. Ah. He was the one that the Beatles called. Yes. Before he, before he met yeah. the Beatles or anything like that. Mm. And something, looking into everything, I went and heard him talk in Melbourne the whole oh, town. Oh. And something, what he said, resonated with me. I went along and got initiated there, you know. And that changed my life and the experience that it turned me around completely. I kept going to him for the next couple of years. In 1970, there was a picture in the paper, still looking at his stuff, there was a picture in the paper that was this bloke sitting on the stump and an Indian guy with his legs on and something up and out and said, I need to go and see this guy. I went and saw him. It was Mok Dananda. And he's another yogi. And so what, I liked what he said and went and got initiated by him. And that also was an introduction to what I called Siddhi Yoga, which is Kundalini Yoga. Had some amazing experiences there too. And I, in 73, I went to India to his ashram. Stayed there for a week and I couldn't hack it anymore. The vibrations were that high, that amazing, you know. Came back. Why, why didn't you? Why couldn't you hack it? What was the problem? Well, the, the you know we we're chanting and meditating. The vibrations were that stirring the body that up much up the kundalini activating. You know, so much mm. as I don't need this anymore. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so you um, Bob, you so you from the Maharashi in the early sixties, you you changed your kind of guru along yeah. the way a couple of times. What was and I, and I was really interested in that book you mentioned by the priest. What was the name of that book? Do you remember? Sobriety and Beyond. And it's by a Catholic priest from Australia or from no, the US? Or? America, yeah. From America. He was, he was okay. an alcoholic in there. He, it's mainly written on the steps. Oh. But I didn't take much notice of the book. It was just what, what he said in the introduction. Didn't it? Got you. Got yeah. You. And just, and the steps, <clears throat> I mean, I've, because I'm from originally from Australia, but I got sober in the UK, and um, and thanks to the Zoom revolution, I've I've met a lot of people in, and I've got, I've been to a lot of meetings in Australia, but it just see I've heard word. Some people have said that um, in the old days in AA in Australia, it wasn't so much about the steps, 
it was more about attending meetings. What, what was your recollection of AA in those in your early days? What was what were the meetings? How did how did they did they read the big book or what was the format of, of AA in the in the sixties? The service mainly. There were only a couple of places that had steps on the wall at all. It wasn't until later I was there a couple of years. And a bloke came around buying, going into the second hand shops and buying old blinds and writing the steps, putting the steps on the blind. Oh, nobody, right. had, nobody had ever borrowed. We don't really that, that we don't need that shit, those steps. <laughs> oh really? The service. But you know, if it, uh, and you could the number of people were meeting, but everybody knew everybody, and somebody didn't turn up, they go around and find him, take him to the meeting, you know, they'd go up, go up to the, all over Victoria, to the, to the few meetings that were going then, take a group up with them, 10 meetings at all times, running around. So it was more about the fellowship, it wasn't so much about the content of the meetings and stuff, it, there was a sort of a, you, there was a, it was about the community of AA, would that be right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it gradually changed and I can ride it down to the steps more and more. Yeah. And what was your, and how did you, you, you mentioned before about the steps, and I, I don't want to go too much into it, but did you get a sponsor? Well, who was you? who do you mind, remember, or do you mind telling us who your sponsor was? Yeah, the, the bloke that lives yeah, a, few door, a few doors away, took me, took me to meet me. So to me so. And then I, another fella came over from uh, Western Australia and he spoke on the steps and started to res resonate with me. And then uh, I think it was 63 or something like that. that uh, what's the name? What was the woman, the first woman? First woman in AA. Uh, oh, from America. Marty, Marty Mann. Oh, yeah. She came out to Australia and gave a talk. And I thought, shit, I'll have to start all over again. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was the uh, and with, with with those early days, like you say, the six those those first three years, uh, and I'm you know I'm, I'm not either way, but what was you what was your sobriety like before that? And then when you did the steps, did you notice a change? You obviously decided that you wanted to to get into it. Was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, great right, man. And the yeah. spiritual stuff, the spiritual stuff, the spiritual stuff. Mm. Yeah, if, you know, if you had six months up, you were an old timer. Then. Yeah, that's amazing what you said about the five year guy who was five years sober being an old timer. That's uh, yeah. that's amazing. God, you just imagine how, how crackers, how mad we all are when we're five years. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. well, and did a couple, you? A couple of a bit longer than that, but there weren't too many, you know. Yeah. The majority of us had six months, 12 months, mm. two years. And did you, when you mentioned um, the, the the woman that came from the states, did did you ever meet any of the other old timers from the states, or anyone from over? Did there, any others visit that you you can recollect? No, not, not in my time. Oh, there were some come out, but I didn't know them at all. Okay. okay. She was the only mm. American I knew. I think. Mm. And did you did you know the story of AA? Did you know how it started? I mean, the, all the stuff that's in the big book. Did yeah. you know how it had started? Were you, were you familiar with the history of AA? Yes, yes. I got it. I got it into the big book. Then I started looking at the steps. Yeah. Great. Great. So, um, so you, you what was the, what was wrong with the Maharashi? Sorry, jumping forward. So, why did you why did you uh, leave the Maharashi? Was or did you find something better? Oh, I thought, yeah, I thought I'd gone as far as I could go there and looked into something else. Mm. And that, uh, Dr. Nanda, when I was at Steve in America, I went back, I couldn't only stay there for a, what was it, a, couple, a couple of weeks, I think. Then the next time I went back, I could, I could understand what they were being said and it didn't, you know, it progressed apparently because I could hear it. And I stayed there, then I decided to stay there for the rest of my life until I grasped it completely. Wow. People, when I went to the ashram, people were saying, you should read this book. And it was behind this architect called I Am That. You might have heard of it. It's very yeah. 
Uh, what what year was that? What what year did you first encounter that book? That was in nineteen seventy six. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to go and see him. You know, people said you got to go and see him. One bloke would, a bloke that had written his book, the book for him. Uh, well, I forget his name. It's time for another one. I'm forgetting. But yeah. he, he was taking people to see him. That's how he got it. But uh, I went into this bookshop one day and picking out books. I picked up this book. There was nothing in it for me, so I was walking out. I said, there's nothing here. And the bloke behind the counter, as I'm walking out, he said, this is a book you should read. And it was I on that. And I thought, shit, well, I've been offered this before. I knocked it back. I've been offered to go there before, but this is too much of a coincidence. If I'm listening to what this so-called higher power is going to say, I should have a look at it. I opened a couple of pages, and what I read there resonated with me straight away. And I went, I was putting it around there. This address was in the front. Door. That was it. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, it wasn't the body. It wasn't the mind or the absolute. And I saw what he was saying, and I'd heard those things many times before. And then must do it this time. It rang a bell. Wow. So there I saw him where, where, do you remember where the bookshop was? Was it? Was it yeah, it was just, a Chaitanya bookshop in Mumbai. Mumbai, okay. Yeah. Um, so do you remember the? Um, I just because uh, obviously I'm I'm a I'm a Nizigadatta fan, um, if that's the right word. What, what do you remember the day that you first met him? And I, I'm not trying to build it up too much, but what 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 was it like when you were leading up to meeting him and, and when you met him? What was your impressions of him? Well, I went round and saw him. And uh, well, when I went first there, he says, come back tomorrow. He couldn't speak English. He didn't have an interpreter. But his little kid interpreted for us. He says, come back tomorrow. That's when he told his meetings. So I went back next day. And he told me what I'd heard many, many times before. You're not the body. You're not the mind. This time I saw it. And I walked out the door and I said, I'll never be caught in the mind again. But I was, straight away. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't the same. This was the thing about it. It was never the same. I'd seen through it. And I said, hang on a minute. You've seen through this. Have another look and see if you're seeing correctly or not. And I was. Mm. Because every time mm. I looked through it, it would get, there'd be a little bit more clarity there, a little bit more understanding. And it grew on me from there. But the seeing through was immediate. But the clearing of it, just like a cloud covering the sky, but the cloud thins out, there's more, more clarity in the sky from the sun, and there's more warmth and affection in it. Mm. That's what start that there, the bit of affection, a bit of warmth, a bit of joyousness, love. And I was there for 12 months seeing whatever I could. Wow. What, what do you think it was if you'd heard it before? And you had all these like the different gurus. What what set? What was it about him? Was it just his presence, or was it his the the, the truth? I mean, something in the way he said it resonated. You know, he couldn't help but love the man. Hmm. He was simple, very ordinary. Without a guru, it would have been there. You couldn't approach him. But if a crowd around, you couldn't get near him and do this and do that. You got to do this. He just told me how it was. Very simple, thing. and I resonated with. Wow. And I came back to Australia and started talking about it, a spiritual understanding. Mm. And they got a lot of people wouldn't listen. But after a little while, somebody came up to me and said, I want what you have and I like what you said. So I was able to talk to them. And they're still around today, 35 or 40, 40 years later. So I know. I know. Thank there God for YouTube, of, mate. That's how I that's how I found you. YouTube. That's you know, that's <laughs> seeing your meetings on YouTube and stuff, it's been fantastic. Um just just to go back to um Nizigadatta, um what can you remember any stories? Is there anything you can recount that of you know, because I I've I've spoke to a few people. I met um I've interviewed David Godman. I don't know if you know David Godman, who's written a few books. Yeah, and, I know. Um, yeah. And he um he recounted a few stories which was interesting about you know his wife and his family set up and the whole the way it was you know it's just uh it was interesting to get like little side personality stories about him and he was uh 
he obviously he, he chain smoked the the little beadies, didn't he, and everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and great. Couldn't help but love the man. You know, he's so, so approachable. So. Mm. 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 And was it an, so? It, it was an instant thing for you, like you said. You it went from being intellectual to to something that you felt. Is that yeah. is that a fair enough description? Yes. Hmm. Something I recognised, and I wasn't the body, I wasn't the mind. Hmm. I was the absolute. What can you hmm. add to the absolute? Nothing. What can you take away from it? Nothing. Hmm. Hmm. Or, as I say in Buddhism, the great perfection. What can you add to the perfect? Nothing. What can you take away from it? And they say it in one sentence there, the great perfection is non-conceptual awareness. Awareness without the concept. I heard that, but I couldn't understand that. After the saying that, or I could understand it quite simply and easily. Hmm. So you you joined together. That kind of joined. You got you got that sense. You got a sense of yeah. That the way it was. The way it, the way it was. Like it's, it's it's interesting for me because I I keep having these little these little sort of awakenings and little clues and stuff. And it's it's little insights. Little insights. Yeah, I guess so that's. But then. The brain kind of the mind takes over and uh you know well yeah. uh, i then i put them all, all all together so i'm not a hindu i'm not a buddhist i'm not a christian i'm not a jew i'm not a muslim mm. but mm. i take the truth from all of those the little snippets of truth in all of them mm. and utilize them all so to speak all of them mm. if they can't teach you anything i can't tell you anything all i can do is point toward and ask you to look to where i'm pointing to to see for yourself. Mm. But when you look at it, there's no one that can ever do it for you or give you anything because it's the one essence that's happening, shaping, falling, and expressing as everything. And you are that. That's the right man for I am that. Innately, yeah. everybody knows it because you say that's a chair, that's a seat, that's a space, that's a sky, that's a tree. Everything is that which you put labels on and discriminate it with the words of the label. Mm. And every word you've ever spoken, every word you speak has been learned. There's no words you were born with. Mm. And we believe in the words. And the words never the real. Mm. Take the word water. Can you drink it? Can you swim in it? Can you drown it? You can't. Mm. The word fire, does it burn your mouth? Can you cook with it? So what's this word I all the way? We've taken to be this person. Where does person come from? Persona, the mask. So we've got a mask of concepts that we're hiding ourselves from that, the ego. Mm. And when you investigate it, you'll see there's no such thing as a need. It's a fiction. Mm. It's a conceptual image we've taken on board and believed in. And you are that. You are the reality always and ever have been. But I'm not noticing it. Yeah. Mm. I've, I've kind of... Um, sorry, go on, Bob. Good. Yeah, because it's it's like you said, there's no Hindus and there's no Jews and there's no Buddhists and... There's no Christians, and I understand that because it's all kind of that dogma <clears throat> and the, the 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 rules and the sort of the supernatural. That's not even the right word. Oh, I mean, I guess all I know is that I'm alive. <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. I am. I yeah. am is the sense of presence, the hmm. sense of life expression too. But then we've learnt words. I am Bob, the Australian, the good fellow, or the bad fellow, whatever I am. Mm. Well, we had concepts on it and lose sight of our true nature. Our mm. true nature, you are the reality. There's only the one person. Only the one self. Mm. They call it the atman of the one self. We call it ourselves a person self. They put mm. the, the skies on it. Skies ourselves with concepts. Mm. And you're already yeah. that. Is that, would you... What about those kind of supernatural experiences? Would you describe your sobriety as a supernatural experience? Was that a spirit? Is that a, a spiritual awakening for you and, and the progression, like the step 11 stuff? Has this been a. I'm just I'm trying to sort of get an idea of your spiritual awakening. Um, you know, from being from being in a padded cell in the, in the Navy and, and, a, and a fighter out in the bush and in shearing sheds and stuff to today is is, is 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 it is that a supernatural experience and have you had any more like that it's just natural it's no supernatural okay, okay. Don't, don't break it up into different sections it's all the one essence 
that thing shall be forming, experiencing, expressing it as written. There is only one God, if you like to call it that. I don't use that term. Hmm. God is just another label. It's a tells you in the Bible. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That's all that God is the Word. Hmm. All things were made by Him, by the Word. Look at that, the tree, the flower. Even. There was nothing made that wasn't made without the Word. We've got words on ourselves. We've got words. It's all the one essence, patterning, shaping, forming, experiencing, and everything. Absolute. Hmm. Hmm. And that's what, that's what the Jews said. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, there's none other. Hmm. Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He wasn't talking about himself, but talking about that sense of presence which expresses through the mind as the thought I am. That hmm. thought is expression as that life essence. And you are the life. Take the life out of that body, you've got a corpse. That corpse of what it rots is full of eyes, ears, nose, heart, lungs, and all, all the organs are there. They're not a bit good to it without the light. You can find like, computers with all that information. You know, you can press those keys as much as you like. If the power's not turned on, what are you going to get out of it? Out of it? Nothing. So it's the power, it's a, like, not the computer, it's the power in that body, mind, the life essence. So what must you be? You're not the body mind, you are that life essence itself. And mm. life lives on life. There is only life. As the Sagarana says, nobody lives a lot. Out of life, more life comes. Mm. Amazing. Um and you, you recounted when you, you, you spoke when you heard him, Nizigadatta. Um what was that realized? Was were you did you have a like a a, a flashing light. What was the realization like for you when when you sort of had the when it became real for you? Just a, a recognition. Ah, mm. this is what it is. Mm. And just mm. as I, all that previous through that previous time, like you, insights were coming up. So everybody has taste of it. But we go back into the conceptualizing and the thinking again, and forget about it. But it's been yeah. going on all your life since you know, you've looked mm. along these lines. Mm. Everything's times when everything's fallen into the place. And, ah, that's what it is. And next thing, the old thoughts come up. <laughs> mm. You get lost in them again. Mm. So, time, will an... come and be, time will come and do, knock the thoughts, and drop the thoughts, and stay in the essence of the thoughts. That mm. essence is the spirit. Mm. Like the, but, mm. the essence. Um, of the, Lavender in the bottle, you've got the citizens. So spirit and matter are one and the same thing. We divided them up. Spirit is subtle and matter is congealed spirit, like blood or congealed set. Okay. That's become the matter. So when you say it doesn't matter and you don't let it matter, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't mm. Mm. Or if you say, I don't mind, mm. you're not thinking of the mind, well, it's not going to trouble you. When we think with the mind and it does matter, stirs up all sorts of concepts, rubbish in your body. It's, a, that's, it's phenomenal because it's a, I'm so often people talk about this dream thing and, I, and I'm, I'm just being total devil, devil's advocate here. I don't have a sense that we live in a dream. I have a sense of presence and I have a sense of awareness. But people talk about this whole dream of waking up like we're in kind of some virtual reality Life is that your understanding? Is that your perspective? Well, as the Sagarada says, realize you are dreaming a dream you call the world and stop looking for ways out. Hmm. The dream is not your concern. Your concern is you love one part of the dream and not the other. You <laughs> says, love all of it or none of it, and the rest will be done for you. And it does. If you wake to the dream, not from the dream, to the dream, realize. We are dreaming this dream, and, and this dream that we're in right now is the waking dream. The only difference between this dream and the dream at night, the dream at night, the mountains and the hills or the rivers, wherever you were, and the house, it all disappear when you wake up. This dream, it seems it has a continued continuity from where it left off the night before. And so the rivers and the mountains and things are still there. They seem to be still there. But it's constantly transient. Everything in this manifestation is transient. It's changing. That body of yours is changing right now. 
mightn't realize it, but there are thousands of cells dying at right now and being replaced. That intelligence energy is replacing mm. all naturally. There's nothing static in the manifestation at all. Mm. And to put a call to the cognizing emptiness, the basic screen in which it all appears on is just silence and stillness. Mm. Now, space like awareness, in other words. Now, can you postulate or think of anything that could be, could be outside of space? What would it be? So it's all the content of space. Mm. And it's all things we think we are persons. But there's no persons at all. Everything, all these things are things. The trees are things, the flowers are things, you're a thing, I'm a thing. All coming on that basic space of no thing. People say nothing, but that's the wrong word. Mm. If you say nothing, you think it's zero, it's else. Avoid, but when you say no thing, I mean, it has not the pat pattern, shape, and form that's patterned is not its reality. Pattern, shape, and form constantly change. So, can something come from no thing? So, you and I really no thing appearing, mm. patterning, shaping, and forming, expressing it as something, mm. and then we're not bound into it the way we are. So why then i guess the question is why why are we manifesting like this why is this why are we having this why not <laughs> why not yeah. yeah okay yeah is it is it a sense that the, our puny little brains it's kind of it's beyond our comprehension i guess in terms of we we think in that causal cause and effect way that we think that there's got to be a point to everything and maybe yeah, you know, yeah. Cause, and, cause and effect is what they call karma and mm. people are concerned about the so-called karma mm. but can there be an effect without a cause there can't be so when you see that the cause you're relating it to as a fiction what's going to happen to the karma mm. it's going to disappear mm. 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 It's an, yeah, I, there's no cause and effect. Yeah. So it's that whole thing about the bird lands on the branch and the apple falls. And we think that the, the apple falls because the birds land, landed on the branch, but it would have happened anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Cool. It's all um, spontaneous. Like time itself is spontaneous too. Mm. Is there mm. a past if you don't think about it? Mm. Mm. But you'll say, I was in the past. I'll say, we'll try and live yesterday. Mm. Try and live last week, you can't, you can recall it. And the only energy you're giving it is what you're recalling it right now. Because you can't tell me what you thought a minute ago now without drawing it. It's already gone. Mm. Mm. It's almost like the, the, the memory's almost a curse, isn't it? It's a it kind of traps us. Yes, it can be utilized, but when it the trouble is it uses us. Mm. You know? mm. it tells me I'm no good or I'm fearful, or after all. I'm only human. That's the worst one we put ourselves. We call ourselves human beings. We believe in the God, you'll call God the Supreme Being. Mm. Take away the label human. Take away the label supreme. Try and separate the beings. And you realise that's being a chair, you're sitting one's being the room you're in, it's being you, being me, everything is that pure being. And being is not becoming. Mm. You try to become something, you never do. You're pure being. I was, um, that's phenomenal. I, I want to sort of, if we can go back to that, we'll come back to the, that, that, the spiritual side of things. I was just wondering, um, are you, what your take on Ramana Maharshi was and, um, whether you, you'd come across him and, and your travels and, and whether you thought he was similar to Nizagadatta or, or any, any thoughts on him? Yes, similar to Nizagadatta, he knew. Okay. Different, different period of time. The language might have been a bit different, or the way of living. It. But in mm. discussion, ask yourself, who am I? Mm. Mm. Just um, people search for that, trying to find that, they don't see the simplicity of it. Who am mm. I? What's that? That's a question, isn't it? Mm. Ask yourself, who's the question? Yeah. Who's the question? Mm. If I'm asking the question, I am the questioner. Well, the question and the question are both the same thing. Two thoughts, two concepts. Mm. So they cancel each other out. 
And then you've got the answer straight mm. Mm. without meditating on it and trying to work it out in the mind because you won't find the answer in the mind. Mm. That's what I tell you. You'll never ever get peace of mind. And I say that, describe that as the peace that passes all understanding. And you can't be understood or grasp it. But the peace is when the mind is not. Recognize the mind is not, you see. Mm. Is there a past? If I don't think about it, you can't say it's a past or a future without thought. You realize that everything is spontaneous, timeless. Mm. You are that timeless because it's the one essence. You and I are both mm. of that same life essence mm. and everything else. Mm. It's it's occurred to me, Bob, though, on occasion, and this is the little voice, the the, the memory or the whatever the ego, whatever you want to call it, um, does come up with it. And it's the science side of things. Is that conscious? Could could it be that consciousness is a trick of evolution, and that it get, that it it basically gives us meaning? So getting getting meaning from life or being aware that we're aware is just a trick of consciousness, and you know the lights go out when you die, and that's it. You know, I don't. See, I just pointed out the time's mental concept. Where's this evolution? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you put, you're making a story, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's clinging. I mean, it's there's, there's a skeptic. I, I like being a skeptic as well, you know, because I don't, I'm not sort of one of these that have, you know, become, become. That's right. Born again, and 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 you know, I'm, I've always been a skeptic, and that's the journalist thing in me. You know, I've always, I've yes. always been looking, that's you know, to question. That's what yeah. you need to ask. ask that. Question everything. Question mm. because you're the only one can find out. Mm. And mm. sleep realise the question is the question itself. Mm. And they're both thoughts, words. Mm. 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 So back to AA. What was it like? Did you go to meetings in India when you were out there? Did you did you happen to go to any meetings? Were they expat? Were they mostly foreigners' meetings, or were there Indian meetings? Uh, I went to one meeting, but I was too busy on the being with the Sarkar and getting everything I got out of him to go to the meeting. Okay. Well, the time, when I went over there, I was fifteen years sober by the time I got into. Right. Had a good, pretty good background. Hmm. So you were well established in in AA and um, yeah, and and the spiritual understanding. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's wonderful that you actually followed that you know all the way to India and you you you, you did that. Um, and what so when you came back, you you mentioned before you came back and um, you you started being a teacher or you started holding satsangs, etc. I guess if if that's the right word. What about your sobriety. How did your how did your sobriety changed in that period of time from your when you came back from India? How, from before you went to India and when you came back, how how was how did you find life? Yeah, Stabilised it more. All sorts of things happened when I came back. You know, bought a farm and lost it. And it got flooded, the trout flood, and got everything taken away. Got the Ross River fever on top of it. Where before Ross River blown, fever, jeez. Where before I would have, would have been blown my head off with anxiety, and stress, yeah. and guilt, and all of it. Just, a, just a curiosity. How's this going to work out? That so-called higher power. There's no higher power. There's only one power. Hmm. It's an absolute total, total power. I'm not. So we look at. It's not my higher power. I am his. Or it's not ever him or his. They're just labels we put on. There's one power patterning, shaping, and forming, and expression as this universe. And I am, and you are, and everything else is that. Mm. Can't, not do. Non duality is not do. It's one without a second. Mm. Mm. So you lost your farm, you got Ross River fever, but you continued on and you, you, you soldiered on. And, um, yeah, you came, dealt with you dealt with things well better. Yeah, came out of that, and everything was going well. We got it managed to get enough out of things to try to get a little health food shop in Melbourne, and then we we, we sold that, and 
invested some money and uh, the, the Dodgers were listed to invest in it and that was all taken away. We're left with nothing again. Really? Wow. There again, there was the one where instead of getting me up there and shooting myself and doing that, I wonder how it's going to work out and follow doing what the missionary did. We came through that. Mm. Still going today. Mm. But my, my knees are giving up on me now. That'll be the next one. Yes. I believe you've um, you've got an operation in a couple of days, haven't you? Yeah, a couple of weeks now. Isn't it? A couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah. So, so life I'm, goes on. It's yeah. no big deal. You mm. know, you're taking gear of one way or another. Mm. Just let it unfold. Mm. Do you still go to AA meetings now, or are you, is it just more a matter? Is it a Zoom meeting thing for you? Do you still manage to get to meetings? I get to a lot of one here, and they mainly go to the the uh, anniversary one, the old timers anniversary. Oh yeah, well you certainly qualify for that, mate. Jeez, yeah, that's amazing. I think um, the Zoom era of COVID has been interesting. What's your What's your take on it? I just I'd be interested to know what how you think AA is now compared to then back in the day and um, where you think what you think of the last sort of twelve months and what what effect that's had on the fellowship. Well, I don't think it damaged the fellowship too much. Like it's more stronger when we just more together closer. But uh, as I say. The virus, so-called virus, put holes on it here and there. Stopped a lot of functioning for people. Mm. Mm. It's there, think... but it's not. It's not the first virus that's been in the earth. Not no. the first plague. There's the old story about the comes from the twelfth. The, uh, the Arabian Nights, the boat, the merchant's going down the market place and he catches up with the plague. He says, hey, plague, here you go. And the plague says, pretty good. He says, where are you going? He says, well, the plague says, I'm off to Baghdad to kill 5,000. Oh, yeah. So the way he goes, he's away for a while and he goes down the market again. He meets up with the plague again. He says, hey, plague, you back here again. He said, yeah. He says, you told me you're going to Baghdad to kill 5,000. He says, I killed 50,000. The bloke said, no, I didn't. He says, I killed 5,000. Fear killed the rich. Ha. Ha. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So um, we're into the last, and I'm just going to ask you a few questions just to sort of um, tick the boxes, I guess. Um, you mentioned before you mentioned you don't like the word god and you don't use the god what could you give us a we i always ask everyone that we do it says what they what they think what is it you i know you sort of you touched on it before or you well you didn't touch on it you spoke about it what what is what is this power just the stillness well, is... well, i call it intelligence energy oh. that's just a label also intelligence is knowing look out there in nature See how the earth's going around the sun, the season's coming and going, the spreading, you're beating your heart, growing your into it. That implies it's suffused with your innate intelligence. Another term for intelligence is knowing. And knowing is an activity. Any activity is a movement of energy. So it's intelligence, energy, patterning, shape, and forming is manifestation. Hmm. Intelligent energy, I like that. That's really good. The activity That's really of good. knowing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Um, what happens when we die? Where do you go? Back into the life essence again. You know, the body can be burned or rot down or ash or whatever, but is any of it one particle outside of space? I don't know. I have no concept of it. Well, if you postulate or think of anything can be, can be outside of space, mm. what would it be in? Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Space, has, Nothing. space has got no boundaries, no centre to it, mm. no circumference. 
and they call it space-like awareness in a lot of the scriptures. Awareness like space. So, if that, so okay, you, you are that space-like awareness. Mm. You're not unaware right now, are you? No. You must be no. aware. Mm. Mm. You must be without trying to label it or put a name on it. When we put mm. the concepts and words on it, we put the full, wrong meaning on it, things. We lose sight of it. Mm. Mm. But you're knowing right now, you not, can't say you're not knowing. And knowing is not the knower or the will be known. It's like the thinking. There's no thinker and thought, but there is thinking. And the thought oh, I think you formed a subject, I think. That's the, that's the ego of me. And I think this thought has become the object. So thinking has been divided into subject object. And you're seeing it right now, you say, oh, I see. You formed a subject to see it. And you see the chair and the table, that becomes the object. It's all divided into subject objects when it's the one essence. Can the eye see? Can the eye tell you what I see? Seeing's happening through the eye, but it comes up as a thought, I see. So you form the subject and an object, you make it a dual, duality. And the Buddhists call it a cognizing emptiness. Emptiness that has the capacity of cognizing or knowing. And he made the statement that emptiness is formed. It's that cognizing emptiness that's forming everything. He turned around the other way and he said the form can be nothing other than the emptiness. So you are oh, you and I are that emptiness, have the capacity of cognizing or knowing. Or and all these things forming through these patterns. They didn't have a pattern to form through. What could it form? How could it form? So as the absolute. It could, couldn't do anything at all. So it, and the thing vibrated to different patterns, forms to express. You are that essence. You are that life itself. That's all I know. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I know. And anything else is speculation. That's in. And postulating, there's, there's, yeah. that's all I know. That's all I know. That's what you are. That's all you need to know. You are the yeah. life. Yeah. The living. Yeah. The being. Mm. Yeah. I was expecting some kind of light show, you know, <laughs> fireworks to go off, you know, go through like in 2001, you know, when the, the Stargate, you know, it's all that stuff, isn't it? So I think that's the, there's a big, they've done us an injustice with all that stuff, I think, you know, yes, enlightenment. It's, it's, it's that simple. That we miss it. Mm. So simple would people move over. And enlightenment, what's that mean? It doesn't mean you've got to acquire something. It, you've got, got to, it, all it means is you've got to unload yourself. Mm. Take the burden off your back and get enlightened. Mm. Mm. Take all the concepts and bullshit we've taken on board in our minds, drop it off, live simply and say. Mm. That's interesting, isn't it? The, um, <clears throat> the whole, you know, like uh, there's various religions that that sort of talk about meditating for for years and years and years and and to attain enlightenment and do you think it's that that, that they feel threatened by things like non-duality or the, the, the advaita or whatever you want to call it because they've invested so much time in it and it seems like it's a waste of time maybe yeah the professor you know the so-called persona of the believe in person i've invested years meditating and look at this stuff I'm not going to let it go. I'm that close to it. I'll get it next time. But if I've been doing it for 20 years and never found the answer and been looking in the mind to find the answer, maybe it might dawn on the answer's not in the mind. Mm. And it's not. Mm. And what way is there out of the mind? Everywhere, every direction you look, will always be in the mind. What way is there out of the mind? Full stop. Period. Don't go there. Mm. It's a thought, see what's right, probably. It's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Um, what do you, um, remember about, um, like AA, com you know, compared to the, like the early days? So I was just going to say what it is like today. Is the format changed between then and now? Is, are we still kind of pretty much? similar to what it was when you came in? Well, 
uh, like I would say, they work the steps more, they do things like that more. But they've lost, I think, a lot of the service getting out there with the drugs so much. Mm. There's that many meetings. Now you couldn't go out and try it with the bloke that came last week. He was not there tonight. You couldn't go and find him where he was. But when you only had one or two meetings, you'd go and see where he was there and somebody you know about him and you'd go and collect him. Mm. And in those days, you'd go and sit with someone, you know, in the horrors or in the rats. <laughs> So um, we'll, we'll start wrapping it up now. I've just got a final few questions that I usually ask everyone. And um, this has just been amazing, mate. So thank you very much for this. I'm, it's such a great honour. Um, what is, well, you just, I wanted you to imagine that you've, um, you've won the lottery, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. You've won the lotto. And um, you decide to pack up, and um, you, once you get your knee operation done, you're gonna you board a super yacht, and you set sail from Melbourne, and you're going across you're going across the South Pacific. You've got all your worldly possessions with you on the super yacht. You're in the sunshine. You're basking. You've got people waiting on your hand and foot. But all of a sudden, off the coast of Fiji, you strike a coral reef. The boat starts to sink rapidly, and all you've got time for is to get a plastic bag and your favourite book. From the bookshelf, chuck it in the in the bag, and get your family overboard, and you dive overboard and swim to a deserted island. You've just got this one book. What's the book you chose? Why and who wrote it and why? Well, the, the book I would choose would be I am that. This I could add it. It's got all the answers in that, mm. and very simple, easy to understand and grasp. I am that Nizigadatta Maharaj for anyone who's watching. So yeah, it's uh, highly recommended. I've I've got the copy. I've got my copy here somewhere. Um, and also just uh, a message from 1960 to anyone who's new in who might be because this is a 12 step. We do it. It's a 12 step uh, podcast. This and a 12 step uh, YouTube link. What's your What's your advice to anyone who's new into the program, into AA, you know, about if they're struggling? What's what's your what's your advice to them? Well, get a sponsor who's familiar with the steps of AA and try and follow them to the best of your ability at the moment you might be able to, but stick with them. As I say, stick with the strength. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Recognize yeah. what, what, it, what, it, what it says. Right? Yeah. And I guess finally, and this is something I, I was trying to think about, what I, there was something I wanted to ask you. Your practice, and I mean, people talk about their practice, okay? So we, talk, we spoke about meditation and stuff, but... What is, is your practice, is your just practice just to realise what you're not or what you are? Is that what you do on a daily basis? Is there any practice that you still do or is it just, you just are? It's naturally there now. Hmm. There's no one to practice it because the belief in it is there. Right. There's a conceptual image of what I'm going to say. Hmm. But it's just as, just as natural as breathing, burning your heart. Going here in the fingernails. Mm. That life is, as the, as the poet said, is closer than your breathing. It's nearer than your hands and feet. Mm. It's the reality, the actuality of it. And you are that. Mm. Don't forget it. <laughs> so, but, and that comes as a result of a lifetime of, or a, a long time of, of practice, I guess, of shredding away those vestiges of self and no, no? just re recognizing just continue to recognize there was one of the one of the bible sayings is be transformed by the renewing of your mind how would you renew your mind God. just keep just keep reminding yourself i am yes. that intelligence energy i'm not the body i'm not the mind reminding yourself. it's there you know it really is. Brilliant. 
Oh, well, listen, this has been great. And just a reminder, but I didn't say it at the beginning, but it's uh, the date is uh, April 14, 2021. It's now 10 a.m. in the morning in uh, England, in West Yorkshire, and I think it's 7 p.m. in Melbourne, um, uh, where, where Bob's speaking to me. Um, so I guess we've just about wrapped it up. Bob, is there anything you want to add, mate? Is there anything you'd like to say, of, you know, just to for whatever, whether it's non-duality or whether it's uh, for AA or 12-step stuff, is there anything you'd like to add to it? Well, there's probably a lot, but I can't remember the yeah. Thank you very much for allowing me to come on the program. Mm -hmm. and That's my, my pleasure. The, and you, you, you hold, um, I'll put the details when we put this on YouTube, we'll put the details of your, I think you hold satsang twice a week, is that right? Or once every couple of weeks? Three three times. Three times a week? And it's Tuesday on... And, Tuesday and Thursday on, on uh, Zoom. And yeah. Sunday morning. It's on Facebook, right? Yeah. Okay. Tuesday morning at 7, 7.30 on, and Sunday morning will be 10.30. Oh, Okay. Okay. So we'll, I'll put details in the, the link uh, when I upload this onto YouTube for everyone. Um, and just to say, yes, uh, I've, I've, I've attended the Facebook thing a couple of times. And the times are a little bit uh, funny for us in the UK, but I'm certainly if you're in the States, in the US or in Australia or New Zealand, um, then it's, uh, it's an ideal time. So, yeah. But listen, Bob, thank you very much. I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you. It's been, a, it's been an honour. So I'll just... Thank you very much. Okay. And